for this book, I wanted to write about somebody who actually lived on, like was a real person. And he was a Jewish guy and he was named Jesus and he lived in a place called Israel, but he would, uh, there was a time in his life where he was walking to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, and I wanted to write about that. But I like to make people up in my head. So I thought, well, what should I do? Because I, he's already a real person. So what I did is I thought about my dad. My father was a great lover of trees and a great lover of wind. He actually really loved seeing the wind move the trees. He would always tell us, this is pay attention to the wind and look at the way it's moving the trees. So I thought about maybe I should create a tree and a wind and tell the story from their eyes about what happened. The amazing thing about trees and wind is that they live a lot longer than us, right? There's some trees that live up to 3,000 years old. Has anyone here more than 3,000 years old? Well, I feel like I am today because it's been crazy. Uh, uh, but so trees live a long time and they see a lot of stuff. If you think about a tree that lived for 3,000 years, they were actually around when Jesus was around, right? The same trees that we see today. So I thought, well, I'll make up um, two characters. And I did. I made up two characters in my head. One is called Bear Tree and the other is called Little Wind. Now, how do you draw a picture of two characters that are a little wind and a bear tree? Well, good thing I didn't have to do it, because <laughs> I could have do that. So my Ill wonderful illustrator, Koa Lei, who lives in Vietnam, I didn't meet her. The, I, they just sent her my story, and then she had to draw the pictures. The reason that I want you to have the book in hand is because I think Koa's pictures are just so beautiful. And the way that she drew Little Wind and Bear Tree, I've just come from two other stops, one at Boulder Bookstore and one at uh, Rake Straw Books in Danville. And it, this is a sad thing because Newtonville Books is, is not, you guys are, don't have as good of an event as the other two because at the other two events, each of my sons was at each of those events. And the illustrator actually used the pictures of my sons when they were babies to draw bear, to draw Little Wind. So I was able to say at, at Boulder Books, I was able to say, we actually have Little Wind in the audience. And, and so Jim stood up and he actually signed books. He's like, Little Wind, and he signed my book. And I'm like, whoa, take it over. And then in, in Ray Straw Books, I had Tim, and Tim was a little more shy. He didn't get up and actually take over the signing. But I said, we have, so, but you have to imagine that they, she used um, the pictures of our boys. And one of the things that I love about this story, it's really my most, most faith forward story. And, um, I've been guided in my career, this is my 20th book, I think. I don't know, I can't keep track. So, I don't know, picture books are so, they're new for me, they come fast, and so I don't, I don't remember actually, I should count before I do these talks, how many books. But um, this one is my most faith forward. I don't know if you know the, uh, the writer, Catherine Patterson. She wrote The Bridge to Terabithia. She was a woman of faith as well. And she said, she recommended that if you're a person of faith, and I think all of us have some philosophy or some faith, I don't think there's a person on earth that doesn't have a belief system, right? And so D.H. Lawrence, a lot of writers have written about the fact that everybody's faith belief system does come out in our stories. It's kind of mystical how that happens. Like we have this belief system, maybe we don't believe in some, maybe the fact that we don't believe in anything, that comes out in our stories too. So she recommended back in the day, she said, if you're gonna be, if you're a person of faith, you should write stories that put your faith in the bones of the book and not wear it like fancy dress, right? So put the bones of books. So I've always thought I'd like to do that. Um, and then my previous books have tried to put this, my what I believe deeply, like I believe in courage and I believe in hope and I believe in joy and I believe, so I put those, try to put those in the bones of the stories. This one though is sort of interesting. I hope it's not like fancy dress. For me, my dream, my goal was to put my faith on my skin. Not off like fancy dress. So this, and you see how there's this beautiful brown Middle Eastern Jewish looking guy um, that is in the story. I, I guess I'm kind of a newcomer to the Christian faith, 19, I was 19. And so I've always thought, did he really have blue eyes? I don't think so. He was from, you know, he was from that part of the world. So it's so happy to have a, a Jesus and, a, and characters that are just have the same color skin I do, which I think is lovely. So I'm gonna read you the story, maybe you can look wrong, 
at the pictures. And if you have questions, I would love to answer them at the end. And I so appreciate you guys. A lot of the picture books with Faith had really easy answers. And I wanted a story where an adult could put their arm around a kid and read the story and ask, well, why do bad and sad things still happen then? We're celebrating Easter this Sunday, but bad and sad things still happen. Some of us are celebrating Passover and we remember back to some bad and sad things that happened, right? So you want, um, you want to put your arms around your, the kids that you read with and give them room for that mystery of asking that question. Why, why do bad and sad things happen? And if there is a God who loves us, why do bad and sad things happen? And that's the question that I'm hoping to answer, uh, that, that will be asked without any easy answers. There's no easy answers to that question, but hopefully the conversation will be generated around dinner tables in the arms of loving adults and children will have room to ask that question because it feels like it's not a nice and neat story, right? I mean, soldiers come in and things, houses get burned and bad things happen and, and hooray Passover and hooray Easter, but still those things happen. So there's room there for questions and that's kind of what I wanted to create here. So that's all I have for you guys. Uh, but I have, I love Q&A, you know it's my favorite time. I love hard Q&A. So that's my favorite thing. So please, if you have any questions about anything, I would love to hear, I especially love to hear from anybody under the age of 20. That's my favorite question. It's a Christmas star and it's a Christmas story. And uh, I just finished the text, I just fine tuned the text about a little star who doesn't really you know, like shining brightly, just likes to hang low on the hills. And uh, Maker says, I got a big night coming up. I need all everybody together here because something big's about to happen. And little star's like, I'm not, I don't want to be part of this. This is scary. This sounds scary. So that's coming out. I just finished the text. Koa has it now. She's going to take some time to draw pictures and then it'll probably come out. It's going to come out in two years. Yeah, it takes a long time. I think anything with care takes a long time something that takes care so but yeah it's a long time you have to be patient in this game you have to be patient I don't know how many of you are writers let's raise your hand if you're a writer but yeah okay my writing friends you're not raising your hand anymore Steve <laughs> okay I've, re I've, I've read your writing and I know you're a writer I have um, so writing is a long game stories come, does not hinder stories, the more a multi-story child is the most powerful child on earth. So all kinds of stories for all kinds, about all kinds of children, for all kinds of children, and that will end up with very resilient children. So it's a great job. I love it. Um,